Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of God Lex. We are in the beginning of, or almost middle of October now, and I decided that maybe it was the time to give a bit of an update on what's going to happen the next couple of months. I did put an order down on my Elf Spike, the Falath Evo, that I'm eagerly anticipating to arrive. I ended up going with the white logos, so the bike will be in that faded color from pink to blue and then um, the, the logos will be white and they will be uh, glossy and the finish on the bike itself will be matte. So hopefully that will give quite a nice play in the bike. I still have a lot of things to do about the bike, so I need to get some bottle cages, a power meter, figuring out what kind of bar tape I would like on it, what color it should be, and all that. But more on that in a later episode. You probably won't be able to see it right now, but I've got already got a bit of the stuff that will go on the bike right here. So we'll look into that after my ride. Because it's Thursday today, and... Um, I'm about to go on the uh, indoor trainer. It's actually pretty nice weather outside, but I want to do it indoors today. Um, the temperature has really dropped the last couple of weeks, so it's only around 10 degrees outside. And even though it's pretty good weather for riding, sometimes it's just easier to go on swift. So that's what I'm doing today. I uh, have it all set up right here. I just need to get my kit on and head out or head up on the bike. So let's do some riding and then I'll get back to you on all the other stuff. So the ride's done, did pretty good I think. Still getting the hang of it after a, a week of vacation and um, basically this is starting my off season. The 2023 season wasn't as good as I expected. I really didn't feel that I actually hit some sort of peak this year. My FTP was lower than it has been for quite a few years despite actually riding more than I've done previous years. And I haven't really been able to figure out why. I think one of the reasons might have been that I've been focusing a lot on zone 2. And also that I've done a lot of strength training. It wasn't until a good part into the season that I actually shifted. So that I didn't do 2 or 3 times strength training a week to once a week. And although zone 2 is really important to do. I think that my focus has been bit off. So instead of doing zone 2 in the beginning and the off season to build that base and then adding on with the higher intensities later on, I basically never really evolved from zone 2 training. Keep in mind that I did of course do my threshold work, I did do some VO2 max, I did do some sprinting and all that, but it just wasn't as consistent and probably my base wasn't uh, at a high enough level. So this off season, I will be focusing a lot on zone two training. And that is basically to really build that base. So for the next three months, I will be following a training plan that is 12 weeks, I guess it is, from Grasper. Basically building um, my, my base and uh, hopefully making sure that my uh, LT1, which is the lactate threshold, 
will be better than it has been for the past year. Basically throughout this season, my FTP has, FTP has been around 285 and my like set threshold or my fat max is around 185. And the goal of this off season is to really see if I can elevate that level. So instead of having a fat max of around 185, hopefully have it closer to around 200 watts. And the 12 week training plan has an emphasis on doing exactly that. So on Tuesday, I will be doing an FTP test or a grassroots test where I'll get to know my FTP as well as my other training zones. And from then on out, I will be doing a grassroots te test about every four weeks to see how um, my level will shift. And hopefully I'll only go upwards. Since this is the off season, I will still have a focus on doing my strength training. Um, it will probably be, probably be around two to three times a week and have an emphasis on squat and deadlift. In the beginning, it'll probably be three times a week and then I'll short, slowly shift into two times a week, just maintaining uh, my fitness, but still being able to do some swift riding and probably do some swift racing because I know to keep my motivation up, I'll just lose it doing some tune work and strength training. So I need to have those rides where I really push and have fun with it. So that's the training plan for the next 12 weeks. And that means that I think it ends in the first week of January and then I'll see what I'm going to do then. But probably around then I'll have to shift my focus to doing less strength training and adding up the hours on the bike and probably also get some more intensity in. But more on that later on. But let's go into some of the parts that I actually gotten for the new bike build. So I'm actually pretty boring when it comes to kitting up my bike because there's just some things that I like to have on my bike. So for the saddle, I went with an S-Works Roman Evo. This is the saddle that I have on all of my bikes. When I had my Scott Speedster, I had not the S-Works edition, I had like uh, an uh, expert edition, I guess it was of this saddle. And both my SL5 and SL6 has this saddle on it. And this is that is because that this saddle just suits my bum really, really good. When I started out this project, I know that I said that I wouldn't go all in on getting it as light as possible. And then I go out and buy this uh, really, really light saddle. But the thing is that Compared to getting like the pro version and then getting this, there's not a lot of um, difference in price, but there's quite a, a difference in the weight. And while we are on the topic of weight, let's go ahead and weigh it. And 133 grams. That's pretty nice, really light. So compared to the pro edition of the saddle, this is a 143. The pro edition weighs around 205 grams. So this is approximately 70 grams lighter. And the thing is, I actually got this saddle for just around 200 euros. And I believe that that is actually what the Pro Edition retails for. So pretty good edition. In terms of the group set, I've been a SRAM rider for approximately 10, 10, 12 years now. And I really just like the shifting that Ram, Ram, SRAM does and I just love their stuff. I thought that going with the Red AXS um, would be just a bit too much. So I actually ended up buying the Force group set, which we have right here. This is the upgrade kit. So this has shifters, it has the rear derailleur, it has the, the brake um, calipers, this is a disc, so I guess they're called calipers. So I'm going to ride it as a 1X, so a single chambering setup. I still have to figure out what kind of cranks I want with it. But for me, the SRAM Force is best bang for the buck in terms of this. And to pair things off, I got a SRAM Force chain, 12 speed, of course, and a SRAM Rival uh, cassette. This is a 1020, uh, this is a 1030, 12 speed. Uh, I went with the Rival because I will be riding this throughout winter and probably the early 
parts of spring. And then when time comes for it to be summer, I'll probably upgrade this to a force or a red. So that is about it, guys. This is some of the stuff that I've gotten home so far. There will be more uh, additions, as, as I mentioned. I need to find some bottle cages at some point. I need to find a power meter and a crank, of course. And then I will be needing some pedals as well. But before we end this video, let's go ahead and see one of the additions I've made to my recovery for the last month. Alright guys, that's it for me for now. Four minutes, cold tub, 10 degrees, it's not easy. So thanks for watching once again, make sure to subscribe to the channel, watch the other videos, and until next time, bye. <laughs>